Welcome to a virtual tour of Quilt Visions 2020. Visions Art Museum began as Quilt San Diego, a nonprofit arts organization founded in 1985 to promote contemporary quilt making as fine art. Our first exhibition, Visions Quilting in the Grand Tradition, was held in April of 1987 and began our tradition of the internationally juried exhibition, Quilt Visions, held biennially. Artworks for Quilt Visions exhibitions are selected for their exceptional expression of artistry, technical skill, and aesthetic value in keeping with the organization's founding principle of promoting the art quilt as fine art. This year's jurors face the difficult task of crafting an exhibition from over 400 entries, narrowing the choices down to only 37 quilts. Jurors Nancy Bavor, Melody Randall, and Emily Richardson come from different areas in the art quilt community, and that variety and background brought dimension to what and why works were selected. One concept expressed by all the jurors was the desire to select works with an immediate visual impact. And the 37 artists represented in Quilt Visions have made that impact in a variety of ways. Originally hosted in Fallbrook, California, then in Balboa Park's Museum of San Diego History, followed by the Oceanside Museum of Art, and finally in our own permanent location in Liberty Station, the exhibition moved to a brand new virtual venue this year. Accessible to anyone across the United States and the world, we offer the absolute finest in art quilting. Welcome to Quilt Visions 2020. Let us begin with Hilde Morin's Embracing Moss. Tree branches jump to the foreground covered with vivid moss, perhaps soft to the touch, reaching to the overcast sky. Compact stitching recedes into the background. Morin has created a representational image, yet it's equally beautiful as an abstract composition. Her curved piecing and quilting with cotton fabrics take the parameters of traditional quilting to a new realm. In Linda Beach's Fall Confetti, the artist challenges herself to use commercially printed cottons to interpret this fall scene, which acts as a metaphor for waning human existence. In the end, we all lose our finery, she says in her statement about the piece. Her traditional piecing and quilting techniques with cotton fabric mark one end of the quilt spectrum. An obvious work of art depicting a complex symbolic nature scene, yet still easily recognized by any viewer as a quilt. Not all quilts are as easy to identify. Some quilt artists employed a wide range of media and techniques to achieve works that, while quilts, are less easily identified. In All Things Beautiful, Charlotte Zebarth tackles a subject matter similar to that of Linda Beach. While Beach laments inevitable loss of beauty, Zebarth contends there is a special beauty in the faded and worn. Perhaps human maturity is a thing of beauty. The artist writes, faded and worn out, not everything wonderful is brand new or young. Contrasting the traditional quilting techniques of Beach and Morin, Zebarth realizes her vision through mixed media, digital art printing and painting paired with her layering and stitching. The work is a grid of clashing horizontal and vertical lines racing the eye across the piece, with some lines taking on the form of perhaps naked branches 
stripped of their autumn foliage. The muted colors and rusts are reminiscent of decay, fading, and overuse. Melanie Marr's Barn Shadows uses acrylics to bring this barn owl to life and highlight the story of the species' decreasing numbers due to habitat displacement. The nearly black and white image reflects the strong moonlight. Bobby Ba uses a multitude of surface design techniques to create look through to the memory. The layering of sheer and opaque fabrics with the further layering of prints, stencils, painting, and photo transfer create a deep space in which the viewer can reflect upon Ba's message of memory and time. It's as if the tiny fragments of memory are stacked upon each other, all bits and pieces that come together. Bus stop started from a photograph. Jill Curtilla then builds the work out from that springboard, layering and adding to create the final tapestry-like image. We follow the gaze from one figure to the next as the young lady moves out of our frame of view and into the night. Once a static photo, it now breathes. Ever experimental, Libby Williamson reflects upon her new perspective when returning to her childhood home with the altered ideas of maturity in Etiquette in Connecticut. The artist capitalizes on unconventional materials such as tea bags, repurposed fabrics, and paints. The artists in these quilts have broken away from piecing cotton to push the boundary of what it means to be a quilt. Similarly, a number of artists in Quilt Visions 2020 skirt a line between quilting and other art forms. In the evening hour of a hermit, Shin Hee Chin uses her own random weave and stitching techniques to paint a portrait of her late father. Each thread is like a tiny brush mark. Although the man focuses his gaze downward, we focus up on the horizon contemplating like him the calm of the moment. Like painting, or perhaps more akin to sculpting, Mary Pell has formed the face of the friendly Bella in her piece of the same name. The artist has manipulated cheesecloth with adhesive before then stitching the piece. Susan Bianchi's Pieces of Perfection doubles as a mosaic. Bianchi has created the pristine face of a mannequin with buttons and beads. In her statement, she ponders, she is beautiful, and yet disconcerting. She has dimensionality, but no substance. Would all aspects of her as a woman add up to total perfection or just pieces of perfection? There are some artists for whom it is all about process. Betty Busby is famous for her machine cut shapes masterfully integrated into the fabric as in vertex. She layers the fabrics over the hand dyed background to create a complex illusion of depth and shadow. The dimensionality achieved through highlights, shadows and layering 
give the impression of soaring through the center of the piece, weaving in and out of the long tendrils. My Awakened Heart by Judy Martin was worked as a two-sided piece, the reverse titled Noble Tenderness. By hand stitching, piecing, couching, embroidering, quilting, applique and reverse applique, she has achieved two finished and compelling works. As we explore both sides of this piece and ponder the double meaning, we can let these words from the artists echo in our heads. About the self, about the huge inner world within, about sun, moon, stars, rain, about light and dark and softness, about all these things at the same time. Lori Booker and her son Ross Booker created the collaborative piece Heart Rush by starting first with an illustration by Ross Booker painted on canvas. To this, Lori Booker added layers of hand painted silk and machine quilting to complete the portrait. Carol Kusmal's process involved playing with the shapes and color ratios until she reached the final solution. Flirting started as a single individual, but as the artist considered the space and color, she decided to add another figure. In addition to achieve the guarded yet open look from a once angry expression, Kusmal adjusted the various pieces that make up the female's face. This transformed the story from one of perhaps jealousy to a scene of coy attraction. Precipice is a visual metaphor for Jan Tetzlaff's own methodology in creating. The precipice seen here can represent a physical or emotional edge echoing her drive to push herself as an artist closer to the brink. The tension of the large shape hovering at the bottom and the discrepancy in weight between the massive pattern shape and the tiny ledge create unease. Tetzlaff explores the possibilities and takes the tension to the absolute limit. Valerie Masser Flanagan in Up and Over used a collage approach to create black and white studies. As these studies were expanded into a larger composition and transitioned into color, representational figures seemed to materialize. This process seems to contrast the cubist process while achieving similar forms. Instead of moving toward the abstract, Master Flanagan moved from her usual abstract forms to embrace the emerging design. Objects in this mirror was a new endeavor into the world of surface design for Karen Schultz. Yet, while exploring new techniques, she held on to tried and true motifs and techniques. Composition, says the artist, is paramount for me regardless of medium or technique. Content is revealed through the process of making and full engagement with my materials. Also concentrating on the process behind the piece, we come to artists who focus on the shape and forms above all. Sandra Palmer Cialino 
focused on forms in her piece Precaria No. 14, Precipice. Quilts in this series explore, quote, bold geometric shapes that lean, shift, and fall in their search for stability in uncertain surroundings. Another artist working with geometric forms is Paulette Landers. Looking in six and other works of the series study the circular shape and the possibilities for looking in, looking through, or stepping into the void. As the viewer, we look through the series of bold yet simple elliptical shapes, receding, following the suggestion of lines moving from left to right. The artist states, my goal in creating this textile collage is to bring the viewer into the picture, to dwarf the viewer, like Alice down the rabbit hole. In Monuments 3, Rosemary Hoffenberg's process was to play with shape and color. The complexity and variety of nameless shapes find calm in the composition. The bright aqua balanced with its more muted cousins is surprisingly tranquil. Drawing in Black and White by Irene Roderick is part of a series in which the artist is examining the concept of drawing with fabric. The artist has achieved a network of lines and shapes in an almost entirely pieced quilt. Our eye is a buzz following the chaos. The complexity of the lines contrasts the simplicity of the color palette to achieve balance. Now we move from artists whose focus was on shape to artists whose main objective is to experiment with color. Dan Olfi's Color Square No. 5 is part of a series featuring colors used by famous artists. Scanned images of painted sculptures and a lithograph by Frank Stella were manipulated in Photoshop, digitally printed on polyester fabric, then quilted whole cloth. The ephemeral moment, sunlight filtering through the canopy, a shower of radiance covering the world with grace, light, and beauty. These are Gail Wilde's words describing her piece, Even Song in the Aspens. The evening sun and whispering wind on golden aspen leaves is achieved through layers of translucent chiffon and organza, and then with printing, resist, paint and quilting to create a peaceful moment. In Choices, Marianne Burr explored a variety of gray tones that she had created, achieving harmony from potential discord. Burr states, the design echoes the place that choice has in our lives. Which path shall I take? Bonnie Bucknam's recent works respond to the colors of light in a particular moment or location. Whether the pink of an icy sunset or the dry sunshine of this scene in her quilt, McCallum Spring, the fractured light is realized with strips of her hand-dyed cottons. Here, the dry heat meets the surprising cool of McCallum Spring, shaded by the vegetation that the waters nourish in the otherwise barren landscape.
I will now move to a group of works for which I would like to focus on the subject matter. Viviana Lombroso continues her analysis of language and communication in her work, Veiled. The mark-making foundations of text and calligraphy emerge as illegible symbols for universal communication. Lombroso points out that the words text and textile come from the same Latin root textere, which means to weave or construct. In Veiled, she makes use of both text and textile to create her own narrative. There is today a rising trend, or should I say revival, in green quilting. Artists are looking to what they can reuse and recycle in light of climate and economic concerns. Quilting is rooted in necessity and practicality, in sewing together scraps of blanket and old shirt. One Person's Junk by Laura Fogg depicts a stack of peeling doors at a salvage yard. The materials used echo the message of finding beauty and new life in restoration and reuse. Is this the reflection of the artist as she stumbled upon this stack of doors? Or perhaps it's the reflection from another time of another person looking through the same panes of glass. Repurposed clothing with scraps and remnants of fabric comprise Deborah Fell's Courage. Thank you, Greta Thunberg. The artist created this work as an homage to the Swedish environmental activists on climate change. Fell asks, she is watching the world and calling for transformative changes. Science supports her message. Are we listening? At first, we see an abstract composition before we notice the eyes. Now we are pulled into the pleading face and the artist's question repeats in our head, are we listening? The usual suspects, presto changeo, empty rhetoric, caught red-handed and sideshow. Paula Kovarik's piece is a humorous glimpse into the absurdity of today's carnival of politics. Her characters are crafted from recycled bits and pieces, collaging scraps from other quilts, reflecting the current trend of reuse. Originally designed as separate panels, the artist has given the characters the opportunity to converse and interact, to allow their message to become fuller in their gathered company. Presto Changeo attempts to fabricate truth. Empty rhetoric speaks nothing. Caught red-handed has something to hide, perhaps in the stock market-like zigzag pattern. And Sideshow is seen here juggling the facts, all four surrounded by a team of minions, as the artist calls them. Commentaries on their own, they create a full dialogue for the artist's message on politics climate change, and corruption. Terry Hancock Maggot's Trout Rain vividly and playfully illustrates blocks of rain in the distance and other images from her home in New Mexico, where the years fluctuate between painfully dry and beautifully wet. We feel the weight of the downpour in the vertical lines. With progress comes loss. What is new replaces something old. In Phantoms and Exiles 1, Joan Schultz mourns the loss of her panoramic city view with the construction of a 300 unit apartment block. In her quilt, she represents the new view, glimpses into the lives of those living in this new behemoth. The block of garish prints literally divides us from the full beauty, for example, of a flower. 
Humorously incorporating packing tape into the composition, she questions the ephemeral nature of our surroundings. What was once is no more. What was not now exists. For a couple of artists, the subject matter dealt with deep issues of mourning and recovery. After losing her husband of 51 years in 2019, Hope Wilmarth used her piece Uncharted to reflect her struggle. The composition is sometimes concentrated, sometimes rambling, often with a straight course, but just as often shooting into a new direction. Is this the experience of one attempting to pick up the pieces? His daily mantra for me to get on with my life, says the artist, and so I find my days uncharted, but not without direction. Karen Ripps investigates loss, grief, and mental illness from the viewpoint of the observer in perinatal depression. From this perspective, the art can be seen from any point of reference. The singular central shape seems lonely. We shift our gaze from the overall composition to the tiny shape nestled inside the textured embrace of the larger object. The final group of artists express themes of comprehension and awareness. Deborah Weir says of her work, First Sunrise, imagine the very first human who recognized the beauty of a new day, the invitation to a new world, the recognition of possibility. The viewer is drawn to the central horizon of the piece, the form suggesting mountains or perhaps waves rolling in encroaching on our space and our awareness. Trace of Memory, Color by Yun Hee Lee explores giving color to emotional memory such as joy, sadness, anger, loneliness, and depression. Without a form, the artists worked abstractly to express their impression in color. The eye runs across the piece until we are seized by a vibrating yellow. The image could be a brain scan with areas of high activity lighting up when activated. A trace of what memory do we see here? Susan Willen, via screen printing and dye painting, creates a cacophony of color subdued only by harmonious and concentrated stitching in treasonous. In her statement, the artist writes, what is the meaning of patriotism? What is the meaning of treason? In our current discourse, even the meaning of words is subject for debate. While Viviana Lombroso earlier explored the fundamentals of symbols in communication, Carrie Green considers the essence of communication itself in conversations with the boss. A message is passed from person to person, perhaps becoming distorted or losing a fragment along the way. Green's use of vivid color and play of organic shapes carry us from individual to individual. With conversations with the boss, we return to an artist as at the beginning of our tour, using cotton fabrics pieced and quilted together in the traditional manner of work, easily identified as a quilt. The artists of Quilt Visions 2020 represent the wide range of interpretations of the concept of the art quilt, exploring a variety of techniques, artistic processes, and media. What is the art quilt in the new decade? 
look to the 37 artists represented here. Visions Art Museum would like to thank its over 650 members, its donors and supporters, and its amazing volunteers for making everything we do possible. A special word of appreciation to the exhibition donors of Quilt Visions 2020, eQuilter.com, Andrea Bacall and Doug Graves, Sue Robertson, Carol Sebastian Neely and Gary Neely, the Starseed Foundation, Judy Warren Tippetts and William Tippetts. Thank you.